One of the most poignant stories um, during this period is the story of one former slave named Joseph Miller who escaped from slavery with his family, Isabella, and their four children. They made it to Union Lines where he was able to enter um, into Camp Nelson, which was a refugee camp for emancipated slaves, as long as he would enlist in the army. So he decided to put on the Union Blue in exchange for um, shelter, food, and clothing for his wife and his children. Um, on one cold morning in November, um, he was woken by a mounted guard um, who sort of for, who, who told him that his wife and children needed to leave the camp. And he turned to the guard and said, you know, I was promised that they could stay here. And more to the point, my child is really sick. He can't get into a wagon and travel off into the unknown Kentucky territory. And at this point, the guards, the Union soldiers, were waking up all of the uh, freed slaves and forcing them into wagons under gunpoint. During the Civil War, these are Union soldiers under gunpoint who are pushing freed slaves off into this sort of unknown land. And he has no choice but to allow his son to sort of go with the army and his wife and his children. And he um, doesn't know where they go. He has to perform the rest of his duties that day as a soldier for the United uh, States Colored Troops. And later that night, he uh, goes on a search looking for them. And he writes, or in an affidavit, that he comes upon a, quote, colored boarding house. And when he opens the door, he sees um, what he describes as poorly dressed, um, starving, uh, freed slaves gathered around a fire trying to keep warm. And he scans the room and eventually notices his family in a corner um, without what he says, quote, a morsel to eat. And he approaches them and he asks about his son's uh, condition and his wife tells him that his son um, froze to death in the journey from uh, Camp Nelson to this um, boarding house, which would probably be maybe five miles. At this point, there's no place to bury his child. He then needs to carry his dead son back five miles in the cold, in this unknown place, and he's free. And he, he's, this is what freedom means. Freedom is that he uh, actually stayed united with his family during slavery. That is in and of itself a huge deal. But it's during emancipation that his family is separated. It's during emancipation that his son died. And over the next two or three weeks, um, uh, the records, the military records, begin to sort of show that um, each one of his children um, dies. And then finally his wife dies. About a month later, um, after looking through all of the Sexton reports, um, Joseph Miller dies. And it's unclear if he dies uh, of pneumonia or dysentery, the diseases that infected so many people. Um, but, it, but, but he was one of the, the, this is one of the stories of the transition from slavery to freedom. There's one small sort of silver lining, if only for the artifices of history, to this story, and that is I finally got the chance to go to Camp Nelson and I located his tombstone. And there is a tombstone for Joseph Miller, uh, the United uh, States Colored Troops, yet there is no tombstone. There is no burial ground um, for his wife and children. And this was the fate of emancipated slaves, that they did die during a war, and a war where they were not properly buried, a war where their remains remain unknown. Um, and there is now work, and it's great work being done by people um, in Kentucky at Camp Nelson to dedicate a monument to the thousands of uh, freed slaves who were not buried. Um, and who, who died during this war.